Good evening, everybody. On behalf of Bodal Chemicals Limited, I extend a very warm welcome to everyone for joining us today on the call today. On this call, we are joined by our CFO, Mr. Mayur Padia. I hope everyone had an opportunity to go through the financial results and investor presentations, which have been uploaded on the stock exchanges and our company's website. We will give you a quick overview of the recent developments in the chemical industry and on our company, and then Mr. Padia will walk you through the financial performance for the quarter. For industry highlights, the inflation in major economies continues to be higher level than the normal leading to lower purchasing power with NAFs, which results in lower consumption at end-user industries and lower demand for our industry. Uncertainty for end of Uncertainty of uh, end of war between Russia and Ukraine for the decelerated demand scenario of the chemical industry. Slow exports for textiles, leather, and paper leading to subdued performance of dye stuff over the last few quarters. European market has been slow for more than five quarters now, owing to multiple headwinds from rising inflation to uncertain geopolitical scenarios. U.S. experiencing most aggressive interest rate hike causing financial conditions to tighten and recessory trends continue impacting the demand. Industry expects this weakness may continue for short term, but gradual recovery is also expected. In today's environment, where Indian suppliers are emerging as preferred partners globally, we have been able to leverage our leadership position. We are the India's largest integrated manufacturer of dye stuffs and dye intermediates and hold a meaningful market share in the world. Coming straight to the operational performance, overall business performance for first half FY24 has been weak as the company's total revenue stood at 677 crores, a degrowth of 22% due to decline in prices of raw material as well as <coughs> and margin is on account of decline in overall demand. Coming to dye intermediates, ash acid and mineral sulfone prices were stable at lower level. On positive side, in first half FY24, total revenue from dye intermediate chemicals stood at 205 crores has reported growth of 16% on year-on-year basis. And it is due to the improved volume. In Q2 FY24, ash acid and mineral sulfone prices were near of uh, rupees 420 for HSA and 215 for vinyl cell phone. Volume has improved. However, margin are still under pressure due to lower realization. More than 40% of our intermediate products are used for the captive purpose to manufacture various ranges of dye stuff. Over the next few years, revenue pie from this vertical will eventually go down and business from dye stuff will increase in favor of steady business growth. Coming to our dye stuff, end application industries like textile, leather, paper, and other types of consuming industries have not performed well during the last few quarters. All leading textile companies are facing global headwinds, which have curtailed the outlook of dice stuff products. The dice stuff business for first half stood at 227 crores. For basic chemicals division, about 50% of our basic chemical is captively used for dye intermediates. Though volume is optimum, however, however, due to the decline in raw material and finished good prices, the revenue for the first half stood at 63 crores. The revenue degrowth of 42% compared to the first half of FY23 port. Coming to the chloralkyl business, post upgradation capex, the chloralkyl business has performed reasonably well. In terms of production, achieved 16% growth in volume in first half of FY24 year on year basis. However, Due to adverse market conditions of caustic chlorine industry, revenue stood at 129 crores and has reported a degrowth of 26%. Coming to the new project benzene derivatives, as highlighted in the earlier call, our main goal is to replace imports and capture business in the pharma and agrochemical markets where PNCB and ONCB are used. We will be installing the capacity of 63,000 tons metric tons per, per annum of benzene derivatives. The Saika Greenfield project is progressing well and is expected to start, start by Q3 FY24. Senar Boya, our Turkish company, has performed well 
though there is global headwinds in the chemical industries uh, and severe severe uh, earthquake in the Turkey in the recent past, whereas the other industries uh, have incurred nominal losses in a medium to long run view, the subsidiaries will bring meaningful business. However, in short term, we are expecting a modest performance. We have been moving up the value chain and working relentlessly towards diversifying the business from our core types of and intermittent business to other specialty chemical products like benzene derivatives. Once we have decent visibility of demand for our product portfolio and new site is stabilized, we will restart the sulfuric acid project. While the global growth and demand, demand is impacted, growth momentum in India is strong. We will expect Lurake business will contribute meaningful business in the coming years on back of a technology upgradation. We foresee demand for caustic soda to remain healthy from FMCG, textiles, and paper industries. Since very few players have a presence in North India, we will have a competitive edge to a certain extent. Manufacturers and exporters in India are having a challenging time managing the overhead cost. Over the years, chemical industry has seen a transformation. Management is taking measures in terms of scale, cost, integration that will help to sail through this tough time. Thank you, and now I hand over the call to Mr. Mayur Padia to walk you through the financial performance. Good evening, everyone. The overall performance of the company has been muted for the quarter gone by. Our standalone performance for Q2 FY24 is as follows. Total revenue for Q2 FY24 stood at rupees 334 crore. EBITDA stood at rupees 28 crore in Q2 FY24 with a margin of 8.5%. Net profit for the quarter stood at rupees 1.03 crore. Our standalone performance for H1 FY24 is as follows. Total revenue for H1 FY24 stood at rupees 663 crore. EBITDA stood at rupees 56 crore. Net profit for the half year stood at rupees 2.1 crore. Our consolidated performance for Q2 FY24 is as follows. Total revenue stood at rupees 336 crore for Q2 FY24. EBITDA stood at rupees 29 crore for Q2 FY24 with a margin of 8.8%. Net profit for the quarter stood at 1.24 crore for Q2 FY24. Our consolidated performance for H1 FY24 are as follows. Total revenue stood at 677 crore against rupees 8.69 crore for H1 FY23. This includes export of 27 crore and domestic sales of 73%. EBITDA stood at rupees 60 crore in H2 FY24 and degrowth of 31%. Net profit for the half year stood at rupees 3.45 crore against rupees 32.79 crore of H1 FY23. H1 FY24 performance of the key subsidiaries was subdued except for Senar Boya. Segment-wise performance on a consolidated basis for the H1 FY24 are as follows. Dash of revenue stood at rupees 227 crore. Die intermediate revenue at rupees 205 crore. Basic chemical revenue at rupees 63 crore and chloralkali revenue stood at rupees 129 crore. Total production volume on a standalone basis for the H1 FY24 are as follows. Dystop reported 6,834 metric ton. Dye intermediate reported 10,492 metric ton. Basic chemical reported 1,12,034 metric ton. Chlor alkali stood at 38,094 metric ton. Our net date at about uh, rupees 800 crore for at the end of H1 FY24 on a consolidated basis. <coughs> With this, I conclude the presentation and open the floor for question and answer and further discussion.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is in the line of Aditya Ketan from FMIFS Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, first question was on to the die intermediate side. Uh, sir, like from the uh, next so from second quarter of FY23, where we have reported the weakest volume for die intermediate of 2,200 tons. From there, sir, we have witnessed a very swift improvement in volumes to around like uh, 5,000 metric tons for dye intermediates. So, that this improvement in volumes of dye intermediates on quarter-on-quarter -on -quarter basis and YOY basis, so despite uh, the Chinese competition, uh, so which are the major players into this business, have we not witnessed any sort of headwinds like increasing imports from China, which is like impacting volumes? But despite that, your numbers continue to remain good on to the volume from the dye intermediates. If you can share sir, some highlight, some idea as to what has led to this improvement. Hello. Um, <clears throat> so if you look at it uh, at a year-on-year -year basis, then uh, last year, FI23, the same quarter, uh, it was the lowest quarter in terms of uh, dye intermediate manufacturing for us. Uh, in recent few years, uh, th that was the worst time that we had experienced in the dye intermediate business. And that is why the volumes had really gone down in that quarter last year. But this year, the volumes, uh, because we are looking at it in a year-on-year -year basis, that's why the, the increase is 100% and the volumes look really solid. But if you look at quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, then compared to June quarter, the volumes, uh, the increase is not that big, that much. So uh, that is the reason why why you see a big increase. So I, I feel that the volumes were are quite normal, where uh, where now uh, due to the rockmetal cycles, uh, you know, getting in a comfortable zone, you know, we are we are now able to uh, at least uh, uh, go for our uh, manufacturing volumes. So that has been happening in the last couple of quarters. Even quarter on quarter basis also, sir, on quarter on quarter basis also, there is a almost 18% jump into the dye intermediate volumes. So what is the like major reason for this jump? Is, is it because of the good demand or lower imports from China or like higher export uh, of dye intermediate? I believe so this is a domestic product. So what is that fundamental factor which is like leading to this improvement in volumes? Basically, um, uh, the improvement is all because of the stability that we have experienced. Uh, yeah, so in June, September quarter was definitely a little better in terms of overall demand. Uh, and uh, more importantly, the basic chemical cycle, the coal prices cycle, they were more comfortable. So, so that's why the September quarter actually had a, a more favorable scenario in terms of the intermediate production and business. Okay. And sir, on to the pricing side, so have we not like uh, witnessed any increase in imports uh, from China because uh, still the demand in China continues to remain weak and they were the largest exporter of dye intermediate like vinyl, sulfone and H acid uh, and pricing almost remained stable on quarter on quarter basis. So uh, have we not experienced any imports, increasing imports or any sort of such? Uh, routine imports, routine imports uh, happen, but there was not not any. Though you are right about uh, the local Chinese demand, uh, what we what we hear about is a, is a little weak and uncertain right now. But uh, as far as intermediates are, uh, go go, you know there are no extra imports that is coming in even currently. I would say so that's why this intermediate demand uh, it's, it's quite stable right now here local demand, and there is no extra pressure of any Chinese product, import import product. Is it also, sir, because they are operating at lower utilization levels and uh, if suppose there is an improvement in demand in China and in other countries, they can further like increase the production and increase the exports. Can this be a thing which, which we should watch out? Uh, 
No, I don't. I don't think so. I, if, the, if the if the demand improves in China, then obviously they will they will cater to that market rather than exporting all the way to India. And um, and they are. I think their their production levels are also not very weak. I think they are also doing quite uh, in terms of numbers. You know, I think all the all the big plants are operational. They are they are doing quite normal volumes at the moment. Okay. Okay. Answer in. Uh, yeah. Sir, in, in, into your pure anti business caustic soda, so prices like last quarter only they had uh, witnessed the uh, so record low level, and this quarter also pricing continues to remain subdued. Uh, so, uh, so what is that factor? Like you had mentioned that the improvement in demand from FMCG uh, could be like the leading driver, wherein the pure anti business could improve. So currently, like for this quarter, that has remained subdued, and that is the reason why prices have not gone up. And uh, it is anticipated that price might go up uh, going ahead. So going ahead, ahead in the longer run, you know, we are linking it with the India, Indian's uh, GDP growth, uh, uh, and, and overall India's agrochemicals, pharma, uh, specialty chemicals, other chemical space, even textiles, even alumina. These are all the consumptions where where we are we are witnessing a growth cycle. You know there are a lot of investments coming up in this space. So uh, and with the with the Indian GDP growing, overall con, you know overall country growing, overall incomes of the citizens growing, I think we see more spending and you know because this has wide application. So in in a long term, uh, what we believe is that uh, you know we are going to witness good demand. And in north there are very very few plants. So where in in western part of India there are uh, there are many capacities and you know it gets crowded sometimes. But in north, uh, you know there are limited capacities. So the opportunity is also good. Okay, okay, okay. And sir, just uh, so last quarter, uh, uh, so Mayur sir has highlighted the fact that uh, we would be uh, so getting some benefits on to, onto the incentives front. So, uh, from which quarter this would start? Uh, it is not yet certain. We have already applied, but it's a uh, government. So, uh, how much time they will take? Uh, it's uncertain. But we are expecting by March uh, uh, the approval should be there. And sir, what would be the run rate uh, of incremental EBITDA per quarter? Uh, this will be uh, this will accrue from November 22, and uh, what we are expecting about uh, 20 crore per annum, uh, rough estimate uh, uh, as far as incentive, both electricity and the GST benefit for the Punjab division. Okay, okay. So just one last question onto the demand. Of, uh, uh, so pretty confident onto the dice. So, how is the current demand of of diastaff and oriented products exporting uh, currently, and how we see increase our exports of diastaffs? Uh, I I think for for a short term uh, comment, uh, diastaff uh, is is still witnessing a little weaker demand. Mainly because of the Europe and uh, war in the Europe and U.S. Uh, inflation problem, so we don't see any immediate uh, major increase in the demand coming in for for dye stuff. But we are we are uh, doing decent volumes. Uh, but at, at the same time, the overall basic chemicals and other input cycles have uh, stabled a little bit, which is giving us a little uh, comfortable uh, working manufacturing. So dye stuff, uh, I think, will will still take some time to to in, to increase in in in, uh, in, in good dig, uh, double digit growth. Okay, so so for FI24 uh, and for FI25, that could be flattish or or a high single digit growth. Yeah, yes, yeah, FI24. So going ahead, this is to uh, the second half. Uh, it can be flattish here. But FI25, I mean, it depends. Really depends on you know how geo geopolitical what all happens in the in the world. Really depends on that. But I think uh, in two or three quarters we should see some some good improvement. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one.
Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. A reminder to the participants on the conference, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is in the line of Rahul Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, can you shed some light on the PNCV, ONCV market in India? What is, uh, you know, the proportion of imports that uh, we use in factory versus domestically manufactured? So, uh, there is a good size of imports that happen in India. There are three uh, other uh, companies that produce PNCB, and their, their volumes are about uh, 1.75 lakh tons per year. At the same time, there is also 50,000 plus imports that happen across India. So our, at, at the same time, the, I'm only commenting about PNCB right now. Our total capacity is 60,000 tons plus, but that includes other four products also. But the main product will be PNCB. So uh, with the main product, uh, our target is to penetrate into our existing customers. We also have a very solid customer base into pharma, into agrochemicals and uh, also replace some of the imports. So looking at uh, our existing customer base, we we have more than 85% uh, of our volume is already, I would say, is going to be sold in our, in our existing customers. And we also have about 15% of captive consumption. That will also play a key role. And, uh, and plus then there is a good export to replace exports is also a good opportunity. Okay, thank thank you. you. The next question is in the line of Aditya Khetan from SMIFS Institutional. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, let me look at the first of performance. So, relative to so, uh, shoes. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Khetan. Your audio is breaking up. Hello. You are now audible? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah, uh, sir, on to the first half numbers as compared to your H1, F5, 23 numbers. On to the profitability side, so the numbers uh, so remain quite subdued with a profit of only 3.5 crore for H1. Uh, and also on to the EBITDA side also, there has been a sharp decline. Uh, so, sir, like how you see second half, should there, so there should be a material improvement since you have uh, already stated that the dye stuff might remain flattish. And dye intermediate also have now reverted to the normal levels. So we, uh, so we should see a flattish second half or there should be a, a major improvement and going into FI25. So which are the factors like which should improve our EBITDA levels or top line levels from here on? Yeah, from this level, uh, as you have experienced and uh, we have also uh, declared the data, dye intermediate business is uh, slowly and gradually stabilizing. So the quantum has improved uh, and uh, prices are also stable. <clears throat> so there is a possibility that some improvement uh, should be there in the prices of uh, dye intermediate and gradually it will follow in dye stuff also. <clears throat> so uh, the, our old model that is basic chemical dye intermediate and dye stuff should start performing uh, better uh, going ahead. So we are expecting uh, definitely somewhat betterment in second half, but to quantify is uh, uh, difficult, but not in a major way. But uh, there are uh, certain areas what we uh, are taking steps uh, internally, uh, that is to reduce our uh, fix overhead, uh, because some of a plant uh, which were working fully uh, in the good time, now it's not viable to, uh, to work over there. 
so we, we are uh, identifying that and gradual process is on so over a period of time we are targeting to reduce uh, about uh, 25 crore <coughs> 22 to 25 crore of uh, fixed overhead reduction in the company as a whole and another area as we uh, mentioned uh, that is about 20 crore of uh, <coughs> incentive that will become uh, available to the company from uh, Punjab government so these two are the area where we have a decent visibility and we are not dependent on any outside parameter. At the same time, uh, what uh, we are experiencing and what we are listening from other company and industry players, that uh, wash part is uh, over. Throughout this uh, current quarter, there are certain uh, things like we need to have a closure of sulfuric acid uh, for one month and uh, there is a Deepavali as well as Christmas. But overall mood or scenario, if we look at, that is improving. And uh, there is no threat uh, from, uh, say, China. Uh, last year, uh, in China, uh, prices of basic chemical were very low compared to India. Now in India also, uh, prices of like sulfur, caustic, etc. are in parallel with China. So there is no threat from uh, China and there is a level playing field between India and China uh, now as far as dye intermediate uh, is concerned. So yes, gradual improvement uh, we, we are experiencing, not in a very big way, but uh, some improvement has to be there. Okay. And sir, this uh, net debt of figure which was given of 800 crore, uh, so in this we have uh, factored in the incremental debt we would be taking for benzene derivatives or like there would be like further increase in, into this net debt figure from your own. Yeah, this is the uh, date uh, at the half year end and there will be some uh, increase, uh, increase by about uh, 75 to 80 crore which is undrawn limit. At the same time, uh, there will be repayment of about uh, 50 crore uh, in the balance uh, quarter, two quarter. So uh, there would be uh, maybe hardly uh, 20, 30 crore of uh, improvement. So uh, at the quarter end uh, or the year end, a figure may be between 800 to 850 crore of uh, net debt. Okay, okay. And so like onto the margin side, so like uh, uh, like for the last uh, seven, eight quarters, we had witnessed a very uh, subdued uh, so margin performance in very low single digit ranging from like 4% to 7, 8%. And so since we are the backward integrated player into DICE and having a, a very decent market share globally, so like uh, when can we see that material improvement into margins from this high, uh, from the low single digit to around at least uh, mid of like a 12, 12 to around 13 percent margin. What would be the driving factor like earlier which Bodal Chemicals used to get? So uh, any like how uh, shift can be there or like we would be at the same level for the next few years? Um, I, uh, last uh, three, four financial years, you know, uh, there has been too many other outside factors, especially COVID and this European war that affected us. Uh, again, this current uh, scenarios where US, Europe, Middle East all have are going through some issues. So due to all this, you know, the demand, especially from the textile space has been very inconsistent. And so we are not able to consistently uh, perform, you know, yes, we do have the integrated model uh, we do have a substantial share in India and also a sizable share in, in, on global map. But uh, due to all these outside factors, we are not able to consistently, you know, uh, perform. So I think going ahead, we will. Uh, that is the, that is our internal target. Whenever the, the times are normal, the demands are normal. I think our business model without the integration, it should be able to perform at least 12, 13 percent EBITDA levels. And with the addition of chloralkyl and benzene, we are we are looking to even push it uh, more towards 14, 15 percent, starting from FI25. But chloralkyl, like into in, in terms of our volumes, uh, so it, 
it has nearly reached around 80-85% utilization level. So still for like this much a share of increase in flow, Alkali also has not been able to like shift their margin upward, that at least till date. Uh, so in future, like sir, how that can be a material uh, driver for your margin change? So there is still room for improvement in the volume. Today we are uh, operating at uh, around 80% and uh, we, we can still take it another 15% more and uh, most likely in two, two to three months time we are going to uh, have a good 15-20% uh, improvement in the volume. So that should that should add some a uh, little bit to the uh, margin. Also, uh, internally in that complex, uh, we, are, we are adding uh, more pipeline buyers in terms of our chlorine and hydrogen. Um, that is also going to make some difference and it is, it is going to give us some more realization. Uh, we also made uh, recent changes of boilers where our, our energy cost will also come down. So there are some, there are still few more factors which are yet to contribute uh, to the optimum level. So I think going ahead in another three months or something, I think all these factors will come into the play, and it should give us a uh, you know additional EBITDA of uh, 20, 30 crores from the chloride business. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is the line of Rahul Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So, uh, can you elaborate on the situation on ground? Uh, have smaller units uh, closed down because of the situation last three, four years? Uh, and how is the supply situation in Daisa finding out right now? Can you please repeat your question? Uh, so, my question is, how do you see the situation on the ground with smaller units which are not integrated like yours? Have they closed down in the past three, four years because of their terrible situation in demand? No, the smaller units have actually not closed down because what is happening is because of this global uncertainty, uh, we are integrated, yes, but then there is also material that, that, that started coming in from China. And because the, even for integrated players like us, we are not able to uh, sell uh, or maximum maximize our dice up sales. So then our intermediate is also available for other other competitors. So it is not uh, making them you know go out of business. But uh, but they are also I would say surviving. And I and because uh, in dice stuff uh, there are there are many products. So because there are many colors and different shades. So there is a wide number of products. I would say more than three four hundred. And at the same time, there is also entire globally, you know, there is a textile consumption happening everywhere. So due to that, uh, you know, even the smaller players have their own uh, product range. They, they also have uh, their own market share. You know, it could be all the way in South America. It could be uh, here in South India. It could be in Bangladesh. I mean, it's a very, very big market. So still, industry has not really reached the point where the integrated players uh, you know, uh, can can force the smaller, not integrated players to to go out of business. It is not happening. Okay. And sir, could you please quantify once again the impact of cost saving and the incentive exactly for uh, my benefit? Yeah. See, there are two parts as I was uh, discussing earlier. <clears throat> Uh, we are uh, eligible for uh, incentive in terms of uh, waiver of electricity duty uh, in Punjab. In Punjab, our electricity expense per month is almost about 12 crore, and it includes about 15% of electricity duty. And once we uh, get this permission from uh, government, uh, our almost about 10 to 11 percent duty will get a uh, wave off. So we will be saving uh, almost about uh, uh, 1 crore to 1.25 crore every month as far as electricity duty is concerned. And second part is the GST benefit 
so there is a formula uh, given by uh, punjab government wherein uh, uh, almost 25% of the gst paid by uh, company will get uh, reimbursed by uh, government and uh, in this case uh, uh, where we are producing chlor alkali the value addition of gst is very uh, big because our raw material is salt uh, wherein uh, gst is not involved whereas our finished good attract 18% gst so there is a huge gap of input credit and output uh, payment so because of that uh, also we will be benefited and for that we we are estimating about uh, 50 to 75 crore 75 lakhs per month depending upon the prices of chlor alkali that that benefit will accrue to us so this is one part and uh, as far as uh, uh, fixed expense is concerned uh, if you uh, follow the company then we did some capex in the year of uh, 2017 and 18 when we did the qip so at that time we have increased our uh, <coughs> diester facility to double at the same time we have acquired uh, other two uh, subsidiary company one was prion and then sps which later merged with bodel but uh, due to this all uncertainty during last 3 years this capacities were not uh, been fully utilized and uh, as we build the capacity our overhead has increased but uh, now there is a time we need to uh, reconsider this um, fixed overhead and that is what we are working and that's why we are targeting and we we feel that we will achieve a reduction of uh, fixed overhead to the tune of 22 to 25 crore gradually i hope i made your point clear yes sir that was that was very helpful sir thank you